All right, we're going to be tying the daddy's money streamer pattern. Super effective streamer pattern. You can also throw with a you know five weight rod if you're on a smaller river. Um, you don't have to carry a couple of rods, but this pattern works incredibly well. Um, so in the vise, I'm going to start with the B10S Stinger size four Gamakatsu hook with some 140 near um, ultra thread in brown. So we're going to take the thread. We're just going to wrap it back to right when the right where the bend starts. Trim your thread for the tail. We're going to be using it's Fish Hunters Gallops Olive Brown. Um, the other, I think there's another just regular Olive Brown that looks very similar. Um, so with this, we are going to do a longer tail. So what I like to make sure is all my fibers are the same size. So length, I should say. So we're going to just grab them by the point to kind of brush down. And what this does is it keeps a lot of those fibers right around the same length. And so everything's going to flow really nicely. And take them and measure our tail real quick. Once I get this right. All right. And I, I typically do it. It's about two shanks on the size four. I'm going to come up. I'm going to do a pinch wrap really get that in there so it doesn't spin on me and we're gonna just work this up to the eye of the hook just behind the eye take it trim it nice and close and then we're gonna come back in and just make sure we're pulling that real tight just to lock that down so the marabou doesn't start spinning all right and because i do that it does because i strip those a little bit it does thin it out so i am going to use two if you have a super full one you can get away with one but two is always better than one that's what i like to say it's not what i like to say it's just what i said so we're going to take it Measure it, get it the same length. Once you're good, pinch that in place. Do one wrap on top and then really get that pinch down. All right, take it back up. One thing that I do when I'm tying in two pieces of marabou is I don't like to trim them at the same spot because it creates a huge lump and it's just a pain to work with. Material slides off. So I trim it a little short just to make it have a little bit of a ramp down instead of just a big lump right there. So material starts, you know, it starts sliding off and it's always frustrating. All right, I'm gonna come up just a little bit ahead for this next part. We're gonna add some flash. So first we're gonna take some of this polar flash um, this is in the Mirage Opal, um, and I'm going to take three strands of this. Go ahead and trim them. And I'm going to just run them through my mouth a little bit just to wet them down so they stay together like that. I'm set that down for a second. Then I'm going to grab some gold shimmer boo. We're just going to use two of these. I actually use this in the full length. So I just slowly pull it out so I don't break them with those. And I'm going to pair them up with my other, with my polar flash, just to make it so I don't have to do this twice. I get to do it once with everything all in one. With those, I'm going to take them and just wrap them like that, grab my thread, pick it up. And just put it right on the top of the fly. Do one wrap to cinch it down. And I just grab it with my left hand.
spread them apart. So you got two of the gold on one side, on both sides, and then you'll have three of the polar flash on each side. I'm gonna take it. That's good and tied in now. Whoop. We're dropping some. And I trim these about a quarter of an inch past. So not too far, I'm just a little past so it hangs out past that tail and gives it a little bit of flash. All right, the next part. I use, it's just the gold eye stub. Um, you can do this with a dubbing loop, but when I'm tying these, I'm usually tying a handful at a time. So to me, it's just quicker to make, you know, a dozen dubbing loops in the color I'm tying these in. Uh, I'm sorry, a dozen uh, dubbing brushes that I'm tying them in and just go from there. So this back fly is actually, you know, this is an articulated pattern. So this back piece is actually pretty easy and pretty quick. So I also tie a bunch of these. All right, we're going to lay that in, bring it back to where everything meets up. Really make sure I cinch that in. I do take the last little bit of that wire from that dubbing brush, just bend it over. Just make, make sure you don't clip your, or cut your thread on that. It's just no fun when you do it. Come up to the front, I'm gonna add a couple half hitches, and I'm going to rest my line right there. All right. Tricky part is on this, it's this first one, these fibers and this marabou like to get wrapped around. So just kind of be mindful of that. I do a couple wraps, bring it back and really pull tight. This does not have to be an insanely thick dubbed fly. Um, I actually prefer this one a little bit thinner. Um, than a lot of my streamers um, that I use this ice dub with, but it just swims so incredibly well through the water. You can see I'm not being insanely meticulous about brushing back every wrap. This stuff comes out pretty easy when you hit it with some, with a dubbing brush. So just bring it right up to the front, get your hand out of the way of the camera. We're going to just tie that in, make sure it's seated properly. There we go. Take your wire scissors, clip that off. I do like to make sure that little point's pushed down, just so it doesn't get in the way when you're doing your whip. Then we're going to whip finish. Little, little lip finish, and then we're also gonna hit it with some UV so it doesn't go anywhere. So right now, what you're gonna want to do, just take your, take that dubbing brush, and really hit it pretty good. Get all those fibers untrapped. Make sure you can kind of, you'll feel if there's any big lumps or something in there from when you're wrapping it. And you can see the reason I tie that tail in so long is these fibers are pretty long. So when it lays back, you just have a little bit of that tail poking through. But if you try, you know, I've maybe a quarter to a half inch. If you try to do kind of your normal size tail like you do on, on other streamers, um, it, it just gets covered up by this and it kind of looks like it's a sharp ending to the fly. I just don't like how it looks and I don't think it swims as good. Once that, is brushed out what you're going to do go to the top of your fly get your trusty sharpie out sharpies are the only thing that won't bleed or you know really come off as easy and you're just going to grab i grab that top little bit and we're just going to kind of color color it down just to give it you know a, a varied color on the back and i go all the way up to right there all the way up to that thread, kind of hit that thread a little bit. Doesn't have to be super dark, doesn't have to be perfect. Just add a little bit of a darker back to this fly. All right. I really like solar as bone dry, doesn't break. It's not as brittle, cures really quick. 
So I just hit that all around and make sure we don't have any issues with thread coming out. Hit that with your trusty UV light while you're trying to screw on the cap with the other hand. All right, that is the first half of the daddy's money. All right, for the front of the daddy's money, we're gonna use the same size hook. Um, I am putting on a slotted tungsten um, fulling mill bead. It's a six millimeter bead, well, cone head. Um, and we're going to use some of the O2O lead free wire. And this is really to make, to help this bead, you know, stay in place. Um, I put, you know, and it does help it get down just a little bit more when that water is a little bit higher. Good thing about this fly though, is it's not a super heavy fly. So, um, you can hit the banks all day long with it. So I'm going to do about eight wraps and on that last kind of couple, I'm just going to do a few right up top like that. I'm going to pinch that right off. And I'm going to slide that right to the top, the front, really push it in there, make sure it's in there good. Now we're going to take our that same 140 denier thread and get it started and then build up a little thread thread dam to lock that into place. Once I have a little of a dam built up, then I'll go over and really hit that just to make sure it's not going anywhere. We're also going to hit this with some super glue. So. She ain't going nowhere. So for this next part, we're gonna, to attach the fly, we're gonna use um, just the Sinyo's trailer wire. I use it in large, basically for all my flies. And honestly, I stick with just this gray color. I never really go any other color for whatever reason. I like to put it right, I start it right behind that lead free wire. And I put that little kink in there. You can see that. Um, Cause I'm going to lock it down with that. I do you know, pretty tight wraps on this. And once I get to here, I'll come back up, bend that over and I lock that down. Just so we know our wires are not going anywhere in that trailer hook is secured. So as I go back, I do keep it pretty low on my side of the hook so that when I bring that other side through, I can place it right on top and you're not going to have any issues with it turning your back hook. I do like to put some extra wraps right at the base where that's connected. For this, for the connection, um, we're gonna, on that Sinio's wire, we're gonna use the 3D beads that Hairline makes. We're gonna do it in red. So we'll take that, drop it on in, and then get your trailer hook on, and then feed it back through, and on top of that red bead on top of your wire so you can see i left it a little short up here because i wanted to really gauge where that bead was going to sit you don't want these too long or else it's going to foul but while i'm tying it in i'm going to correct all that i like enough to where we get good movement and that wire sits straight up and down So I just kind of do a loose wrap first. See where that bead's gonna stop. 
and pull my wire a little bit closer to it and really lash it down right there. Once it is tied in, just for the sake of weight and balance, I pull this wire over to the side of the hook as I'm tying it. And I'm just kind of doing space traps right now. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i go back through and fix all that. Get it right up behind the lead through free wire. Pull tight. Lash it down. Take your wire scissors. Trim it. Now, on this part, you gotta be extra careful. Do real light wraps for the first few to cover where you just cut that wire. Then you can cinch it down. There we go. I'm just pulling it down enough right here so that it all sits straight across. And do a bunch of extra wraps because that's where it will, the thread can fray on streamers as if that little piece right there, you really got to build it up. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to do just a half inch. Zap a gap. Just to make sure that this connection point right here isn't going to break at any point. And that lead free wire is not going to slide around at all. If I put too much, take a little bit, bit of marabou from your leftovers, kind of pull it off. This doesn't stick immediately to marabou or dry immediately on marabou like it does to your fingers and let it dry. All right, once your super glue is dry, go ahead and bring your thread back. And we're going to tie on some marabou to cover up this connection. So on this one, you can use two. If I use two, I push one closer down, kind of tie it so it's kind of facing the bottom. The second one I set right on top. I had a good fluffy piece of marabou though. Same color, it's that olive brown. With this, we want it to go, I don't know, about quarter down the shank of that back hook. We'll just pinch that in. I don't do extremely tight wraps for those first ones because I do like to make sure we got some going around the whole hook to really cover cover that up. That red bead's nice, so it does shine through a little bit, but it's not overwhelming. And this marabou really covers up your that wire connection. We'll just take it. I go all the way up to the cone. Put it in there, try to trim it off as close as you can, and then really tighten down on your marabou. And as you can see, it's kind of the way that we did that wire tie in right here, it's, it, it is kind of continuing to taper, which for a long time, I didn't think really made a difference. Um, now it does look significantly better when you have it tapered nicely swims nicer really looks good in the water because there's little bits you do you can tell um all right so this next part we're gonna flip this over and i'm using the ice wing the eight inch fibers um in pearl i just cut a little corner off the bag and we're just gonna grab a handful of fibers Kind of got to do it a little loose or else you'll break them all. All right. So once you get some fibers, you don't need a ton. So just, you know, just a handful of strands to make a nice little thread. I guess you call it. I don't know. All right. Same thing like I did with the other flash. I'm going to go a little above the, where I really want it to end. I'm just going to loop it right around. 
And I'm gonna tie it and lay it so it's just over itself and work it back to that tie-in point of the marabou. And then just really make sure, make sure it's tied in tight. I'm gonna flip that back around. Just kind of leave that hanging. Um, if you have a material clip, use your material clip. It is, that stuff will start going everywhere. All right, now I'm gonna take your eye stub, either, you know, do a, do a dubbing loop. When I do a dubbing loop, I will say I do a pretty big loop um, just so I don't, so I have enough, especially on this stuff, because you need it, you need extra to be hanging there. You don't want to use all of it up before you finish the last steps. I'm just going to, right where that eye stub starts, that's where I'm going to place it. Give it a good tight tie down. Like I said, I take just the end of it, bend it back. That way, I, you know, it's not going to get pulled out. It's not going to go anywhere. All right. Put a couple half hitches. Sure, one's good. I don't know why I always do two, but I do. All right. I'm going to brush that back a little just to get started. Give it a couple wraps and then really cinch it, really pull down on your wire to make sure that's staying there. This stuff does, on this hook, it starts getting tangled and everything, so you've got to be a little bit more careful as you're wrapping it. Try to kind of pull it out and tease it out just so it's, it doesn't get all stuck in there. All right, and like I said, you want to have some just a little bit left over for this next part because you are going to need to cover up some tie-ins so I just leave that right there I'm going to come through and go ahead and get everything on undid get all those fibers that are trapped out And then go ahead, you're gonna to wanna to brush it back where it's gonna be laying. And we gotta tie this, that ice wing in. So we're gonna take it, I hope we can see it, and you're gonna brush just on the sides. You can go on each side and brush. So you kind of find that middle point on the bottom of the fly. Once you find that middle point, take your, that ice wing, Kind of pull straight up, kind of make sure you're not all wrapped around and trapped. Pull straight up and we're going to go, I got to look at it real quick. You're just going to go straight down the middle to that bead. Once you're there, just lock it in. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle, but try your best. I do two behind. I'm going to brush all this extra back. Do a couple in front, just to make sure that's not going anywhere. Then, I'm going to flip that back over. Right there. Now, take some, I use silly legs and amber. We're going to take those silly legs, tie those in. Make sure these are even. Because this is, I mean, even though it's on size four hooks, it, it's still a pretty long fly with that tail, the way it's tied in. So I just wrap them around that thread. Get, get one wrap just to lock it in place. Move your ice wing out of the way. And then I do, I just do a figure eight to tie these down where I want them. Keep them real close to the bead. Got a lot going on at this point, so 
your things can get in the way a little bit sometimes. Whoa. All right. All right, once you have those coming off either side, I take everything, ice wing, all of it, the legs, just give it a good tie down so nothing comes out, nothing breaks. Now, I'm gonna take that last bit of flash, well, of ice dub, Get your thread in front of it again. We're gonna come through. I'm just gonna do a handful of wraps just to finish out what you had left and it'll cover up all your that tie-in point. Just grab it. There we go. I'm gonna do one on one behind, one in front, one in front. That is not gonna go anywhere. Come in here with your scissors. Try not to cut a bunch of I stuff out. There we go. We're gonna take that. Grab your whip finish. Push everything back so it's not in the way. Great thing about these is I actually take it and slide your thread right there and it kind of you move it so it kind of locks into that slot, which I like because it protects, protects your thread. And what I'll do just to be safe, I'll take before I go any further, I'm going to take that, that zap a gap. Sorry if I'm blocking it. I just drop a little bit right into that. Locks the thread down so it's not going anywhere. All right. Now, you got to get through this mess. All right. So, what we're going to do, take your ice wing fiber, just pull it straight up. You want to trim it you can see where my gold is you just want to trim it about about the length of that eye stub then we're going to take your legs we want the legs to go just about where that tail starts where you start to see that tail trim those those are hanging down right there i got that in the way now take your brush again get those get that last little bit of wrap out just be careful you're not you don't pop your legs off or break them i should say and the magic touch your sharpie. What you're gonna do for this side, you're just gonna take it, grab the top few, you know, top handful of gold, hold it tight. I'm just gonna draw all these lines going up. Gives it a nice good pattern on the back. And that, my friend, shake it all out, is the daddy's money. And when this thing's in the water, it lay, everything lays down nicely, but this ice dub moves so well. Um, and even though these, you know, these amber legs are pretty lightly, you know, pretty light and a little bit hard, to see against that gold, especially on the camera, but it adds a really nice lateral line going all the way down. 
but tie this, tie a handful of them, go fish them. Um, I do these in copper as well. Um, some minor differences, um, really it's just with the ice wing fiber. I use a yellow um, and then everything else is the exact same. It's a solid streamer anytime of year. Go fish it. <laughs>